Greetings, Sunday School Scholars. It's time for Sunday School. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for being so concerned that we receive justice. Thank you for the study of your word. Your word give us all the equipment. It equips us. It gives us all the tools that we need to have a great justice system right down here on earth. And we thank you for it. Empower us to fulfill your purpose for our life. Help us to seek justice for all. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Our memory verse, 2 Chronicles, the 19th chapter, verse 6. And said to the judges, Take heed what ye do, for ye judge not for man, but for the Lord, who is with you in the judgment. Our lesson aim, by the end of the lesson, we will understand that God is the ultimate authority to whom we are accountable. Reflect on a time when choosing the fair or just option worked out for good and judge fairly when given the responsibility. Our introduction, establishing a judicial system. Jehoshaphat created a system of reform by establishing judges for the people in Judah. In the third year of his reign, he sent leaders to teach in the cities of Judah, and they had the book of the law of God with them. Let's look at 2 Chronicles, the 17th chapter and verse 9. And they taught in Judah and had the book of the law of the Lord with them and went about throughout all the cities of Judah and taught the people. My, my, my. Saints, look, let's look at this and then compare it with our lives today. Our judicial systems and all of our government uh, systems today. This is what Jehoshaphat did. We have a Bible. We have the word of God. We have the book of the law right in front of our faces. It's freely given to us. It's freely left on record for us to build and establish our systems, our government systems right here on earth. And it's said in the third year of his reign, he sent leaders. Saints, we have leaders, our leaders in the White House, our leaders on the executive board, our leaders in the House of Representatives and our Senators. He sent the leaders to do what? To teach in the cities of Judah and there to represent us in the entire United States of America. We have selected them to represent us. But what did they do? And they had the book of the law of God with them. They didn't forget their creator the one that made the heavens and the earth, the one that set man on this earth to replenish the earth, the one that gave us the book of the law. My God, my God, if we can only have a reform of our governmental systems down here on this earth in the United States of America, what has made the U.S. of America so great today? Listen, what do we have on our money? In God we trust. If we can only reform and turn back to the book of the law of God to set up our government. Second Chronicles 17 and 9, And they taught in Judah. And when they taught them, they had the book of the law of the Lord. We're told to pray for our leaders. Let us pray that they would turn back to the God of the universe who made the heavens and the earth and who gave us the book of the law to live by, our guide, 
our masterpiece. And they went about throughout all the cities of Judah and taught the people. In chapter 17, the Lord was with Jehoshaphat. Huh, that's a key right there. Who was with him? The Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the first ways of his father, David, and sought not unto Balaam. Oh God, if we can only turn back to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But sought to the Lord God of his father and walked in his commandments and not after the doings of Israel. My God, Israel had turned away from God. Saints, how about us? Have we turned away from the God of the universe? In chapter 18, Ahab, the king of Israel, asked Jehoshaphat to go with him to fight against Ramoth Gilead. Jehoshaphat wanted to inquire of the Lord. My God. Oh, if we had leaders that will inquire of the Lord from the president on down to inquire of the Lord if they should fight. All the prophets said, go up. Now listen, saints, this is just an example for us today. In this day and time that we are living in, all the prophets said, go up. But Micaiah, the prophet said, no, after being coerced by Ahab. He let them know that God sent a lying spirit and lied through all the prophets. Oh my, we need to visit this, even in our land today. If all the leaders would go to Sunday school and learn and read the word of the Lord, how to govern our nation. Jehoshaphat wanted the Lord to be with him. He inquired of the Lord. He asked God. And listen, regardless of what all the other prophets had said to the king of Israel, Micaiah was the only one that gave the truth. The Lord revealed to him that he let, he let and, and Micaiah let them know that God sent a lying spirit and lied through all the prophets. And Micaiah, after being coerced by Ahab, said no they should not go up he took a stand by himself how many of us today need to take a stand and proclaim what god has given us to tell the people well we find that jehoshaphat didn't listen to micaiah either but god spared jehoshaphat the king of judah and moved the enemy to depart from him. When they found out it was King Jehoshaphat, God spared his life and moved the enemy to depart from him. However, a certain man drew a bow and smote the king of Israel. And about the time the sun went down, he died. And it's very interesting to read the full, uh, the full lesson, the full story. Uh, concerning Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, and the king of Israel. They're different personalities. Jehoshaphat had a heart for God. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hananiah, Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. In other words, the Lord was angry with you because you went out to help the king of Israel and you didn't listen to the prophet Micaiah. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee. Whew, praise the Lord in that thou hast taken away the groves of, out of the land 
and has prepared thine heart to seek God. Jehoshaphat had a heart for God, and God knew it, and he spared his life. So what did Jehoshaphat do? The need for a judicial system based upon the Old Testament law. Here we find in 2 Chronicles, the 19th chapter, verse 4. And Jehoshaphat dwelt at Jerusalem, and he went out again through the through the people from Beersheba. And here we see Beersheba on the map here. So he, he went from, he lived in Jerusalem. He dwelt in Jerusalem. We see that here. And he went from Beersheba to Mount Ephraim, which is all the way up here. And brought them back unto the Lord God of their fathers. He restored them back to the Lord God of their fathers. Mount Ephraim is referred to over 30 times in the King James Version. Mount Ephraim is not a specific mountain, but is the hilly or mountainous region of Ephraim's territory. And so thank God for Jehoshaphat being over the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, those two tribes. We remember the story when the 12 tribes of Israel were split up and there was a king over Israel and a king over Judah. Jehoshaphat was the king over Judah. Take heed what ye do. Watch what you do. And he set judges in the land. When he went uh, to Beersheba and he went all the way up to the Mount of Ephraim, what did he do? He set judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of Judah, city by city, and said to the judges, Take heed what ye do. Be careful about what you do, for ye judge not for man. Listen, you're not just judging a man, and you're not judging because of a man that puts you in position, or men. But when you judge, you are judging for the Lord who is with you in the judgment. God is with you. He see what you're doing. Wherefore, now, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Oh, my God. If we can have judges that have the fear of the Lord upon them. Judges that will judge righteously, that will pray and listen to the voice of the Lord. Take heed and do it, for there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, and there should be no iniquity in you. You are representing God. You are judging for the Lord. Nor respect of persons. My God, Lord, help us. Pray for our leaders, our judges, our lawyers, our attorneys, nor taking of gifts, regardless of how much money a person has, they should not be able to buy justice. Oh, if the USA can return back to the God of our fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to walk in the ways of the Lord. And so how did, did Jehoshaphat prevent abuse of power? He set up a system. The, the judicial system of reform was established in levels to prevent abuse of power. Jehoshaphat taught the Levites and priests to take heed what, to do, what you do. Judge justly for the Lord and uh, you work for the Lord. He reminded them, you're working for the Lord, not man. God will be with you when you judge. Let the fear of the Lord be upon you. There is no sin, no iniquity with the Lord, no partiality, respect of persons, nor favoritism, no buyouts, no gifts. This is how you prevent abuse of power. 
Jehoshaphat laid the law down before them. This is what we need to be uh, judged by today. We need a reform in our judicial system and all of our court systems, from state all the way up to the White House, to the Supreme Court. Lord, help us to prevent abuse of power. This brings us to our second outline, the Supreme Court, 2 Chronicles, the 19th chapter, verses 8 through 11. Moreover, in Jerusalem did Jehoshaphat set of the Levites and of the priests and of the chief of the fathers of Israel for the judgment of the Lord and for controversies when they return to Jerusalem. And so we find here that Jehoshaphat set up the Levites, the priests, and the chief of the fathers of Israel for certain judgments, for controversies. And remember, they were judging, uh, it was for the judgment of the Lord. They looked as, at this not as man's uh officials but they were god officials they were standing in the place of god judging for the lord uh, when he returned to jerusalem and let's look at a delegation of responsibilities this is what he was doing amariah was the chief priest so it said he set up levites and priests he uh he was priest and is over you in all matters of the lord this is from the one of the other versions. And Zebediah, the son of Ishmael, the ruler of the house of Judah. So it says chief of the fathers of Judah. And that was Zeta, Zebaniah. And it says for all the king's matters, they were to judge the king's matters. Also, the Levites will be officials before you. So we see he's delegating authority. He didn't try to handle it all uh, by himself, but God instructed him to set up delegation of responsibilities to the chief priests, to the Levites, and to the fathers of Israel. And we have done that here in the United States of America. We have all different types of court systems. And the highest court is the Supreme Court. Oh, if our court systems today will dedicate themselves to judge by the word of God in honesty, justice for all, and in the fear of the Lord, and not go by respective persons and gifts. Romans 13, 1 and 2, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. This is what uh, God has commanded those that are in authority and us to do. We're to be subject to God, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resists the power, resists the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to them selves damnation. My God, God has laid his law down before us, and it's up to us. It's up to us to keep the laws of the Lord. And he let us know that when we resist the power of God, when we resist the ordinances of God, then we will receive to ourselves damnation. However, when government becomes corrupt and disobedient to the laws of God, let's look at Proverbs 29 and 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Why does the people mourn? Because of the wicked. And it says that when we resist, the power of God, we will receive to ourselves damnation. 
my God, let us have a reform in our government. Let's pray for a reform in our governmental systems. The Bible tells us to pray for those that have rule over us, that we might live a quiet and peaceable life. My God, the equipping of the judges. Jehoshaphat set up a central court in Jerusalem to deal with major cases, including homicide and appeals. Notice that Jehoshaphat wanted these cases to be heard by the Levites and the chiefs of Israel and only in Jerusalem. These cases were to be brought before those who could interpret the religious laws and the civil laws. This would imply that the cases had civil and religi religious overtones. The king's primary objectives were that all judgment must be done in the fear of the Lord and with a heart that is focused on justice and truth. Oh, if we can only have those rules to today, if we can only govern by those laws today, in the fear of the Lord, and with a heart that is focused on justice and truth. Let us pray for the leaders and those that have rule over us. Delegation of responsibility. So listen to what Jehoshaphat did. He said, and he charged them saying, thus shall ye do in the fear of the Lord, faithfully and with the perfect heart. My God, here we are again. He charged them. He gave them a responsibility to do it in the fear of the Lord to do it faithfully, and to do it with a perfect heart. This is the oath of the United States that our judgmental, uh, our, our courts uh, have our judges to take an oath, to take a responsibility. This is their responsibility. I blank do solemnly affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. They're inviting God to help them to be faithful, to judge righteously, to affirm that they will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Delegation of responsibility. Pray for those that have authority over us, that rule over us. Pray for the Supreme Court and all the other court systems that we have in the United States of America. We know that we need prayer and we need it badly. This is the oath that is taken by the judicial system. Since we're talking about Jehoshaphat setting up the judicial system, in his day and time, it says, I do solemnly swear or affirm, and we always affirm that I will administer justice. Listen, that I will administer justice without respect to persons. This is built upon the word of God and do equal right to the poor and to the rich. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me as blank under the Constitution and laws of the United States. And then it has at the end, so help me God. Saints, we need to be praying that God would help them to fulfill the oath that they have taken 
their responsibility. This oath is much like the responsibility Jehoshaphat set before the leaders during his time. Do we know our constitution and laws of our land, the United States? We have lawyers, judges, and government officials, and we pray to keep the laws of God in our land. How far have we gone from God's word? My God, my God. Only God knows and sees everything. And we can see in our justice system, in our courts, what's being done today. Let's hold them responsible. And the only way we can do that, saints, is through the power of prayer. Sometimes when we say, let's pray, people think that that's just a, 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 a byword. But there is power in prayer. God promised Abraham that he would spare a whole city if he could just find 10 righteous people. We believe that God has many righteous people down here on the face of this earth. And we can pray. And I believe that we're praying that God will hold back judgment on the United States of America. He said it's damnation when we forget God, when we do the opposite of his laws. So let us continue in prayer in our day and time, that we can receive peace in our day and time, and that we will pass it down to our children and our children's children to keep the word of the law of the Lord. Warn them that they trespass not. Verse 10, And what cause soever shall come to you of your brethren that dwell in your cities, between blood and blood, between law and commandment, statutes and judgments, ye shall even warn them that they trespass not against the Lord. And so wrath come upon you and upon your brethren. This do and ye shall not trespass. So we see here that when attorneys and uh, lawyers and judges, when they are in their uh, responsibility of duties, they have a warning here. And it warns them that they don't trespass against the law. When you're do exercising your duties, you're not just exercising them to man, but you're standing in the place of God. And he warns them, you know, don't trespass against the Lord uh, with unfair judgment. When you're not judging righteously, you transgress against the Lord. God instructs us on our assignment and cautions us not to abuse the authority he has given us. God reminds each of us that we are accountable for what God has instructed us to do. We stand in the place of God and we don't want to trespass against the Lord. Equip with the knowledge of God's word. And behold, Amariah, the chief priest, is over you in all matters of the Lord. This is still Jehoshaphat speaking. And Zedekiah, the son of Ishmael, the ruler of the house of Judah, for all the king's matters, also the Levites, shall be officers before you. Deal courageously, and the Lord shall be with the good. When we do righteous, God is with us. But when we do wicked and unjust judgment, the Bible warns us of damnation. Reformation. Deal courageously and the Lord shall be with the good. Reformation is never easy, whether in a church or family or business or community. Are you willing to challenge the status quo Despite the naysayers, remember, God is with us to bring about change for his honor and praise. 
If you ever been in a place, whether it be a church or in your own family, in a business, on your job, or someplace in your community, and you realize that uh, reformation is needed, that unjust judgment is going on, uh, it's hard. It's never easy to take a stand. We've had to do this, to take a stand against unjust judgment or when you just see things that are, are are done contrary to the ordinances of the church or the word of God listen God will be with you it's a challenge to have to stand against the naysayers oh my god it's a challenge but remember, God is with us to bring about change for his honor and praise. It's never, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, my God, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. And even though we see it being exercised in the flesh through people, it's hard to stand against the status quo. quo. But God will be with us and he will see us through. He will equip us with the knowledge of God's word to help us. We pray that you have gathered much wisdom, much knowledge concerning this Sunday school lesson. Uh, we pray that we will be encouraged to take a stand for justice. Let's support our Sunday school at dollar sign cash new life. And also in my favorite, Givelify uh, at the New Life Community Kojic at 1570 Chambers Road in Delwood, Missouri. Let's support our Sunday school. We ask each uh, person that benefit from these lessons to send $5 to our Sunday School Department so that we can stay on this platform and be able to uh, bring our Sunday School lesson to people, not only just you, but it reaches all over the world in Twitter, in Facebook, and in YouTube. May God bless you.